Hello everyone, Michael the Librarian of Magic here, finding and cataloging the magical and pointing you to it. Today is October the 10th. I have another Disney villain drawing for you today. Another one I'm really excited about because not only is it one of my favorite characters, but it's from my favorite animated Disney movie of all time. So without further ado, I give you Sir Kay from uh, 1963's The Sword and the Stone. I just love this character, and I love this movie so much, and it was a blast drawing this. I really liked this pose and attitude. I like this scene of him eating the chicken bones where he is. This is when Merlin first shows up to their castle, and he performs some magic and stuff and kind of impresses Sir Ector, but Sir Kay is very unimpressed, to say the least. Um, but it, a really fun movie, a great character, um, and, I, and I just really like this one. Uh, Sir Kay was basically principally animated by Milt Call, who I've mentioned many times, one of Disney's Nine Old Men, but also was developed by storyboard artist and writer Bill Pete, who I also mentioned in my video I did um, a couple seasons ago about Madame Mim. He's one of my favorite Disney legends as well, um, and just has a really cool career. Uh, I mentioned a lot of stuff about him before in a previous uh, video. Um, he was, um, this is ba based on the Arthurian legend. Sir Kay is a character out of actual Arthurian legend. Um, and the, but the story of, uh, uh, the sword and the stone itself is based on a novel by a, a, an author called T.H. White. The book is called the once and future King. And the first segment of that book is basically the plot of the sword and the stone. Um, and that's sort of what this movie is largely based on. Um, and Sir Kay is kind of an anti-hero, I guess you could say, in the film. Um, he is mostly kind of an antagonistic jerk throughout the whole thing. Um, Arthur, or the Wart, as they call him, um, is Kay's foster brother. He's Hector's foster son, Sir Hector's foster son, and eventually kind of becomes Kay's squire. He's supposed to help Kay with his equipment as he goes to all of these knighting tourneys, um, jousts and stuff. Uh, but uh, he's not great at it and, and so forth. Uh, in the end of the movie, of course, uh, it's not really a huge spoiler alert, Arthur pulls the sword from the stone and becomes rightwise king of England. And um, because he forgot, he forgot Sir Kay's sword when they go to this tourney and he needs to find one on the quick so he finds the anvil with a sword in it in this churchyard and he, sa he says hey there's a sword and he pulls it out of the stone without knowing the special properties of it and then uh, of course they're one of the best scenes in the whole movie or one of my favorite scenes is everybody comes out and says oh it was pulled so you should give anybody a try and Kay walks up and says anyone can pull it once it's already been pulled and then he tries to pull it out of the stone once it gets put placed back in and he can't and nobody else can and eventually I believe it's Sir Pelliner um, tells the crowd if the boy says that if you know if the wart says that he pulled it out of the stone give him a chance to prove that he pulled it out after all these other guys get a try and of course Arthur pulls it out once more. And, uh, and a really lovely a scene that always touches me is a really lovely moment. Um, Kay is dumbfounded and Sir Ector uh, recognizes Arthur as king and he tells Kay to bow to his king and Kay does. And it's a very lovely moment. Um, and then uh, in the rest of the book and in the rest of Arthurian legend, Kay becomes one of the Knights of the Round Table. So he is kind of, he kind of gets char his character turned around a little bit um, in the end. Uh... One thing that's cool about him being a Knight of the Round Table, just sort of a fun little tidbit, is they recently redid the decorative exterior of the King Arthur Carousel at Disneyland. Um, and it now on the outside, you know, ringing around the carousel, it features um, the shields and crests of the Knights of the Round Table. And one of those is for Sir Kay. So if you happen to be there at any point and you take a, a look at those shields that are hanging there if you find a shield that looks like it has a couple of keys on the crest uh, that's that's the crest of Sir Kay so uh, there's a, a little kind of nod to Sir Kay there on King Arthur's carousel at Disneyland which is very cool and a bunch of the other knights is too even plenty of knights that aren't featured in the sword and the stone but are featured in Arthurian legend are uh, have their crests there at the car at the carousel but uh, it's particularly neat to see Sir Kay's up there um, let's see, a couple of other little tidbits about Sir Kay, um, 
some people say that the uh, protagonist of Don Bluth's uh, breakthrough video game series from the early 80s called Dragon's Lair. Some people say that the hero of that, Dirk Daring, looks a little bit like Sir Kay or is kind of based on, you know, the rendering of Sir Kay. Um, you know, here's some images. You can decide for yourself whether or not you think that's true, but I think it is kind of an interesting thing to take a look at and compare at any rate. Um, the character was voiced by... Um, a actor named um, Norman Aldir, and uh, he did a whole bunch of stuff um, in supporting roles and things like that throughout his career. He mostly did a lot of westerns early on, western TV shows like Bronco and Lawman, um, but he did end up doing quite a few voiceover things too, even towards the latter end of his career. Besides Sir Kay in the 60s, once, it, once the 80s rolled around, he was also in the uh, animated Transformers the movie. Uh, he voiced Kranix and Arbalus in that movie, both of those characters. In the 70s, he also was the voice of Aquaman and Green Arrow in the Super Friends show, which was pretty popular in the 70s. Um, and then one of, one of the great little side roles that he pops up in that uh, people would maybe not know or they would know the movie, but they would not know it's him. He plays Lou Carruthers, the soda jerk, you know, barkeep in Back to the Future. Um, so whenever you see that guy in Back to the Future, which is one of my favorite movies anyway, um, if you watch that, whenever you see that guy, Lou, uh, you know, when um, George McFly says, give me a milk, Lou, chocolate. That guy, Lou, is the guy that voiced Sir Kay in... Um, the Sword in the Stone. So I thought that was a really cool little tidbit as well. The other thing about the voicing is there are a couple of groans in the movie that for whatever reason weren't recorded by the principal voice actor. Uh, they were stock groans that were done by J. Pat O'Malley that they just had, um, you know, recorded in the studio on stock, uh, probably from, you know, Jasper or some early recording. I mentioned J. Pat O'Malley when I did the Horace and Jasper video. So that was also another little random thing I learned. But anyway, um, you know, this is kind of some of the stuff I learned about Sir Kay and some of the people involved with Kay. Just a character I love from a movie that I really, really love. Um, and I'm glad to be able to highlight it and sort of, uh, you know, give give that movie some, some love and, and uh, give these characters some love. Because uh, I feel like sometimes they get a little forgotten about or lost in the shuffle of... Um, you know, Disney films and Disney history and all that stuff. So really happy to do this one. Really proud and pleased with how the drawing turned out. Um, I hope that you enjoyed it. I hope you learned uh, or learned a little bit as much as I did and that you uh, were entertained and informed um, about Kay. So thanks as always for watching these. I'll have more coming out each day for the rest of the month. Please join me for those.